Out, Jane. Are you sure you shouldn't stay at home? Go back to bed. Oh, it's only a little flower arranging, my dear bunch. I'm sure I can manage. Oh, Julian only heats the church at service times. It'll be as cold as the grave in there. Oh, my bed might be warm, but it's one step closer to the grave. Oh. Look at poor Mr. and Mrs. Monday. She had a stroke a week ago, and now he's come down with pneumonia. I know. That's why I'm trying to make you look after yourself. I'd rather be making myself useful. Oh, 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 oh. Arthur, would you mind holding the flowers so I can get it? Oh, no, I, I, I'll get it. Oh, oh. 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 <laughs> thank you. <laughs> oh, a little rakish, <laughs> but it suits you. <laughs> thank you, Aunt Jane. <laughs> now let's get inside before we catch our deaths. Oh. Mm. <laughs> I wish we had some lilies. I get so tired of these scraggy chrysanthemums. Well, it may be chilly, but... Oh, see the sun through the east window. Oh, like jewels, isn't it? I often think the coloured glass is quite crude, but when the light shines through it... Look, on the chancel steps. Is he all right? Oh, I don't know. He could be sleeping. Hello? Hello, sir. Perhaps we should fetch Julian. Excuse me, sir. Are you all right? <laughs> Sanctuary. Oh, my. He's been shot. Uh, don't move, please. Don't try to move. I'll get help. Sanctuary. Go, Bunt, quickly. Oh. I'll be safe with him here. Oh, will you? Are you sure? Oh, my. Go before oh. it's too late. It's all right. It's all right. You're safe here. Help is on its way. Jewel. Yes, the light is pretty. Or did you mean Julian? Did you come here to find him? If you could tell me. Please. Please. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, Bunch. Bunch. <laughs> Agatha Christie's Sanctuary Dramatised by Joy Wilkinson We moved him in here, Julian and I and Dr. Haydock. We thought he'd be more comfortable, but he never regained consciousness. Internal bleeding. There was nothing more you could have done. No. That's what the doctor said, didn't he, Aunt Jane? Hmm. He'd been shot at close quarters, rolled his handkerchief up into a ball and plugged the wound with it in an attempt to stop the bleeding. Oh, the poor man. Could he have gone far, Inspector? With a, with a wound like that? Well, a mortally wounded man has been known to pick himself up and walk along the street as though nothing had happened, only to collapse ten minutes later. <laughs> the shooting could have occurred some distance from here. That's something, if it didn't happen in the church. He could have shot himself, dropped the revolver and staggered towards the church. I, I suppose he may have regretted the suicide, Wanted some kind of forgiveness? Or... Sanctuary. That's what he was looking for. That's what he said when we found him. Sanctuary. And Julian. Although my husband is certain that he never knew the man. It may have been Jewel, not Julian. He could see the light from the east window. Did he say anything else? Nothing that made any sense. He said, please, twice. They were his last words. Please what? I don't know. He was grasping at his side as he said it. It was as though he wanted me to do something, but I don't know what. You did everything you could, Aunt Jane. Oh, come this way, Inspector Slack. I have things from his coat. Oh. Here, look. There was just his wallet, an old watch, and the return half of a ticket to London. Uh -huh. I hope you don't mind that we went through his coat. 
There was blood all over and we were trying to find out who he was. Well, there's some initials on the watch. Oh. W.S. Oh, well, that's a start. I'll get back to the station, see what more I can find out. Please do call if there's any news. I will, and you take good care of your aunt. Oh, I will. Oh, that was a delicious dinner bunch. You barely touched it. But now I really should be going home. Oh, I've told you, you're welcome to stay the night. We've got plenty of room. Um, shouldn't you answer that? Only if you promise not to vanish while I'm gone. I promise. Go along now, it could be important. Sanctuary. Jewel. Please. Please. Oh, Jane, you've put your coat on. I told you, dear, I'm going home. That was Inspector Slack. It's all been solved, the man. You know who he is? His name was Sandborn. His sister, a Mrs Eccles, she called the police to say he'd gone missing from their home in London and had taken her husband's revolver with him. He'd been depressed. They think he came here from London and shot himself? He'd been in a low state for some time and getting worse. But why come here? Did he know someone here? Inspector Slack didn't say. I suppose when someone is unwell like that, there's no accounting for how they behave. Mm, I suppose so. It's a huge relief, though, isn't it? That it wasn't a murder? Yes, dear. If that is indeed the case... Mrs Eccles wants to pay us a visit tomorrow. Me, I mean. You don't have to be here. I could get Julian to help out. Oh. A clergyman is so useful when people are bereaved. No, I'd like to be here to meet her. If your very kind offer to stay is still open... It's been a terrible shock, as you can imagine. A, a terrible shock. Yes, I'm sure it must have been. Can I offer you some tea, Mrs. Eckhart? Oh, no, no. It's very kind of you, I'm sure. But I, I just came to, well, to find out about poor William. What happened, what he said and all that, you know? Do you really think your brother could have shot himself? He'd been abroad a long time. I know he'd had some very nasty experiences, though he never said what. Very quiet and depressed he's been ever since he came home. It said the world wasn't fit to live in. There was nothing to look forward to. Oh, poor Bill. He always was a troubled soul. Oh, dear. I thought you'd fetch Julian. You think William took your husband's revolver? Pinched it, he did, without our knowing. And then it seems he came here to finish it. I suppose that was nice on his part, not doing it in our house. But why come here, of all places? Well, that's what I was wondering, Miss Marple. If he said anything, giving you any clues to what he was thinking? He said sanctuary. Sanctuary? What does that mean? I asked my husband. In Greek and Roman temples, it meant the place where the statue of a god would be put. In Christianity, you have the right of sanctuary in a church. Since the 4th century, my husband says. Oh, right. I think it means he chose here because it's a holy place. It makes sense if he took his life. That he might want to make amends? What do you think it means, Mrs. Eccles? I have no idea. No idea at all. Sorry. I should let you get on with your day. Vicar's wife is a busy lady, I know that. Oh, I really don't mind if you'd like to stay and talk. You're very kind, but I have so much to do. Oh, I almost forgot one other thing. I think you've got his coat. The police said you had it, and I'd, I'd like to take all of his things, you know, sentimental-like. Oh, well, I gave the inspector everything from the pockets, his wallet and watch. What about the coat? Oh, well, it was such a mess. I... oh, I'm not even sure what I did with it. I believe it went upstairs with the towels and basin. Oh, yes, it needed a proper clean. It was... so stained. Could I have it back, please? What, what now? Before it's been cleaned? But that doesn't matter. It's the last thing that he wore. I'd really like to have it. If it's not too much trouble, please. No, of course. It's I'll no get trouble. it, Bunch. You stay here. Mm -hmm. I won't be a moment. Is she going to be long up there? I'm sorry. 
Perhaps I should check if she's all right. She may have had a spell. She hasn't been very well lately. Oh, I'm so sorry. The daily woman had put it aside with the other clothes that were going to the cleaners. <laughs> it took a while to find, and, and then I've done it up in brown paper. Oh, you didn't need to do that, Miss Marple. Oh, I wanted to, to do anything I can for Mr. Sanborn. Uh, well, it's appreciated, I'm sure. I'll be uh, on my way now. No need to show me out. I don't feel like I was any help. Perhaps I should have got Julian in to console her. I don't think she was really in need of any consolation. What do you mean? I don't believe she was his sister. He knew what sanctuary meant. The way Julian knows, he was well read, educated, nothing like her. I'm not sure that's fair, Aunt Jane. Julian is much better read than I am, much cleverer in every way. People can be completely different, however closely related they are. You are clever, Bunt. Oh. But on this matter, I'm sure you're mistaken. She had no interest in the wallet or the watch, but the way she wanted his coat, that old shabby blood-stained coat just as it was, that wasn't for sentiment reasons. Why else would it be? When he said jewel, he might not have meant the light. The way he kept grasping at his side made me wonder. You think there were jewels hidden in the coat? No, but there was something in there. When I found the coat, I saw that the lining had been sewn up with a different thread in one place. So I unpicked it, and I found a little piece of paper inside. And then I sewed it up again quickly with matching thread. That's why I took so long. But luckily, I'm an old lady who takes a while to do things, so she shouldn't have reason to suspect anything. Aunt Jane, I'd been worried that you'd been ill up there. What was the piece of paper? It was this. A cloakroom ticket for Paddington Station. A cloakroom ticket? Mr. Sanborn had a return ticket to Paddington in his pocket. Hang on. A return ticket? Doesn't that prove that he was planning to go back? Not planning to commit suicide. Clever girl. But someone had other plans. Oh, maybe Mrs. Eccles or, or someone she's in league with. And they shot him because they want whatever he's got hidden. At Paddington Station. That's why he said please. He wanted me to find the cloakroom ticket before Mrs. Eccles. No wonder she was so desperate to get that coat. This calls for action. I'll call Inspector Sir. No, not just yet, Bunt. I was thinking more of a nice trip up to London. We could go to the sales, get a few new towels and sheets. Pass through Paddington Station. Really, Aunt Jane? Are you sure you're up to that? Oh, it's remarkable what effect the proximity of death can have. I've never felt more alive, and it's my responsibility that poor man begged me. But shouldn't we leave it to the police? We're only collecting an item from the cloakroom. It will be perfectly safe, as long as we're not followed. Followed? We'll go right now and call by to see Edna on the way. I think I'll be needing the old speckled tweed with the beaver collar. Bunch, do you really need more glass cloths? Always, and they're very cheap. Although not as cheap as the ones that awful woman managed to snatch from me. People are ruthless when there's money to be saved. Or jewels to be gained. <laughs> oh, look. There's Edna. Oh. Uh, Edna! Oh, nice to see you here, Miss Marple. So kind of you to give me the afternoon off. Well, you're still working after a fashion. Have you got that um... envelope? Ma'am, here you are. Excellent. Now then, off you pop and have a lovely afternoon. I'll see you back at home this evening. Enjoy the sales, ma'am. Don't go overdoing it. I've only bought a face cloth. Don't worry, Edna. I'll take care of her. <laughs> Now, if you've got enough glass cloths, let's make a phone call to Inspector Slack before we go home. Via the cloakroom at Paddington? Have you got the ticket? I have indeed. You look tired, Aunt Jane. The sails are enough to tire anyone out. You'd better let me carry the case when we get back. Oh, it isn't heavy. No, but if someone has followed us and tries to take it, then I don't want you getting hurt. Someone most certainly has followed us, and they will try to take it, which is why I should be the one carrying it. 
I don't want you ending up like poor Mr. Sanborn. I don't want you ending up that way either. Well, better that than ending up like poor Mrs. Monday. Oh, I knew we should have let the police deal with this. The police should be there if Inspector Slack got my message. Oh, here we are. Please let me carry the case, Aunt Jane. Do stop fussing, Bunch. I'm trying to look after you. Yes, but there comes a point where you can't. Sorry, Bunch. I have to do this. You understand? Very well. But I'm here if you need me. Not too close, Bunch. I don't want you to put him off. Who? Where is he? Are the police here yet? Oh, you go and check. I'll just wait here. Oh. Let go of the case, old lady. I beg your pardon. You heard me, and I'm not going to say it again. <laughs> No, Bunch, get back. Set, let go. Oh! Police! Stop right there! I'm not letting go. So don't you think of running. Uh, <coughs> steady there, madam. Almost had a nasty fall. Now then, what's going on, sir? <laughs> oh, nothing. It's just this... Uh, this old lady picked up my case. I was really trying to retrieve my rightful property. Are you all right, Aunt Jane? Quite unharmed. But I assure you, sir, the case is mine. Well, there's a simple way to settle this, if the case is yours, sir. What do you say is in it? Well, here's my card. I'm Edwin Moss, a theatrical costumier. This suitcase contains various theatrical properties which I brought down here for an amateur performance. Right, sir. And, 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 madam, what do you say is inside? A long, speckled coat with a beaver collar and two wool jumpers. And a pair of shoes. Oh, of course, I forgot. Uh, just like you've got my case mixed up. <laughs> Typical old lady. <laughs> well, let's have a look inside and see, then, shall we? <clears throat> a beaver coat, two jumpers and a pair of shoes. Oh, oh, oh. But... It well, it can't be. Because you saw me collect it from the cloakroom. But you didn't see my housemaid switch tickets with me beneath the face cloth. Face cloth? What? Well, I don't know what you're talking about. i better go and find my case. No, not so fast, Mr. Moss. I think you've got some explaining to do at the police station. May we call in at my house on the way, Inspector Slack? I think Edna should be back soon. And I'd like to see what she has picked up in London. She's not back yet, but I can put the kettle on. No, take a seat, Bunch, oh. please. I'm sure you'll find whatever Mr. Moss has to say most diverting. Go on, Moss. If you come clean now, it could go better for you in court, depending on what you've done, of course. Well, I haven't done anything. It was all her idea. Mrs. Eccles, you mean? She's not Mr. Sanborn's sister, is she? She does have a brother who's been abroad and come back a bit touched in the head, but he's still alive. Unlike Bill Sanborn. So who was he? I can help you out there, Mrs. Harmon. It's what I've been looking into this afternoon. We got notification about a prisoner who escaped from Charrington Prison around 48 hours ago. His description matches the dead man's. Sanctuary. Of course. He was being hunted down by the law, so he took sanctuary in the church. Why was he in prison? What had he done? He was a jewel thief many years back now. Maybe Mr. Moss here can tell us more about that? There was a dancer doing turns at the music halls. I don't expect you'll have heard of her, but she had this speciality act. Arabian Nights, like. Uh, Aladdin in the Cave of Jewels, it was called. A certain member of an Asiatic royal family fell for her in a big way. He gave her a rather magnificent emerald necklace. The historic jewels of a Raja. And the affair didn't last and he soon moved on to a film star, leaving Zubeda, that was her stage name, with only a necklace. But she didn't have that for long. It disappeared from her dressing room at the theatre one night and was never seen again. Now, she said it was stolen, but there was a lingering suspicion that she might have engineered it herself. For some reason. And what do you think happened to it, Mr. Moss? Me? I know what happened to it. William Sanborn pinched it. He'd once been a man of some education and breeding, but he'd come down in the world and was working for an obscure little jewellery firm that acted as a, a fence for robberies. And that's how you came across him, I presume, when he acted as a fence for you and Mrs. Eccles? Well, for Mrs. Eccles, certainly. 
I, I'm just a muscle, if you will. I do as I'm told. I don't make any decisions. So Mr Sanborn stole the necklace and went to prison for it? No, Sanborn went to prison for acting as a fence in several other jewel robberies, but no one ever knew what became of Zubeda's emerald necklace. Oh, we knew all right. And we knew that he knew. So when we got word from our contacts inside that he'd escaped, Mrs Eccles got straight on the case. To get hold of the suitcase, which you believed contained the jewels. We tracked him from London to here, caught up with him behind the station. It tried to make him see sense, tell us where the jewels were hidden, but he wouldn't play ball. Mrs Eccles got angry, tried to make him talk, but even with the bullet in him, he still wouldn't. He wouldn't breathe a word. He just stared at us. A deaf cold stare and walked away. And she told me to follow him and finish him off, but I, I, I couldn't. That look in his eyes. I couldn't understand it. Why would you give up your life for some jewels? Well, you've risked your life for some jewels, Mr. Moss. You may yet lose it if the jury don't believe your story. If they think you pulled the trigger. Well, I, I'm just the idiot who runs around after her. Look at me, sent to accost old ladies on train stations. And I've even messed that up. If you don't kill me, Mrs Eccles will. No chance of that. My lads are arresting her right now. Ah, here comes Edna. Hopefully with Mr. Sanborn's suitcase. I tried to have a peek, but it's locked fast. Or should I get a chisel, Inspector Slack? Have you got a chisel? The stronger of the two pallet knives will do, Edna. Won't be a tick. I still don't understand how your maid got hold of it. I think he may be right, Inspector Slack. About Mrs. Eccles being the brains of the operation, it's quite simple, really, Mr. Moss. I had Edna come up to London on the next train, after us, and deposit a case of my old clothes in the cloakroom at Paddington. Then she swapped her ticket for the ticket I had, which belonged to Mr. Sanborn. So I collected the case of clothes, and you followed me back, leaving Edna free to collect this case in safety. Here you go, Inspector. Uh, thank you. Now, here we go. <gasps> oh, oh. <laughs> Aladdin's cave. The flashing jewels she wore to dance. I uh, don't get it. Where's the necklace? That, that's just her costume. Well, look at the costume. What if you were right, and Zubeda did plan the theft of the necklace with Mr. Sanborn, who was a jeweller? He took the stones from their setting and fastened them here and there on her theatrical costume, where everyone would take them for mere coloured rhinestones. That's why the necklace was never seen again. She made sure it went missing before anyone more unscrupulous tried to steal it. Mrs. Eccles, for instance. So the jewels were there all along, on the costume? Mrs. Eccles is going to go mad. Both you and Mr. Sanborn were under the spell of very clever women, Mr. Moss. But I think William may have meant more to Zabeda than you do to Mrs. Eccles. How do you know that, Aunt Jane? Because of this suitcase. Zabeda must have left him her jewels when she died. Well, she is dead, isn't she? Mm, died last year. And in her dying days, she sent the cloakroom ticket to Mr. Sanborn, the love of her life, for when he got out. Very clever, Miss Marple, but that doesn't explain why Sanborn broke out of prison now to get the jewels. Or why he came here with the ticket. Or why he used every last ounce of energy in him to make it to the church for sanctuary and for help. Let's see if there are any answers in here. Could you... Lift the costume, please, Inspector. It is rather heavy. Hardly surprising, the size of those jewels. <gasps> An envelope. I had a feeling there might be. What's in it, Miss Marple? A marriage certificate between William Sandborn and Mary St. John. Well, that was Zubeda's real name. So she did love him. What a romantic. And a birth certificate for their daughter, Jewel. Jewel? That's what he said in the church. And that's why he came here now and wouldn't give up the ticket. He came here to give it to his daughter, Jewel. But there's no one in the village called Jewel. No, but there's a nice, quiet girl who might have changed her name to something a little less unusual. 
Jill, perhaps? Jill? The little girl who lives with the Mondays. Their goddaughter, taken in when her father went to prison and treated as their own. But now, with Mrs. Mundy's stroke and Mr. Mundy falling ill, she's likely to be sent away to live in an institution, which is why her father risked everything to get here and make sure she got this, her inheritance. This will set her up for life. A nice boarding school. A place of her own one day. He wanted her to have it, even if it meant him losing his life. Does that make sense, Mr. Moss, of that look in his eyes? It wasn't just some jewels you wanted him to give up. It was his daughter's future. And he was willing to die for it. Now, thanks to you, Miss Marple, her future will be safe. Well, that's yours, Mr. Moss. Well, <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. Oh, I had no idea he had a daughter. I swear, I I'm sorry. This I way, Moss. Mind if I take the case with me, Miss Marple? Of course. I'll make sure it's kept safe for young Jill. <sighs> I do hope he took the right case. She won't be able to fun much with that old beaver collar. Thank you, Bunch. The brought lilies. Oh, lovely. So much nicer than those chrysanthemums. They're not for the church's flower arrangements, sorry. They're for Mr. Sanborn's grave. Oh, where is it? Over here. Let me take your arm. It's a little uneven on the grass. Oh, I can manage, Bunch. It was only the other day I was fending off a violent attacker. And I still haven't forgiven you for that. <laughs> Look. Here it is. Oh, yes. William Sanborn. Beloved husband and father. Well, William, these are for you. Oh. There. Rest in peace. Oh. I hope you found sanctuary. Why don't you come back to the rectory for tea? I'm sure Julian would love to see you. Oh, thank you, Bunch, but not now. I think I'll go home. You're not feeling ill again, are you? I know I'm fine. No need to fuss. Very well. I think I'll walk back along the river bank. Look at the rose bay willow herb while it's still in bloom. Goodbye, my dear bunch. Goodbye, Aunt Jane. In Agatha Christie's Sanctuary, dramatized by Joy Wilkinson, Miss Marple was played by June Whitfield, Bunch by Rosie Cavaliero, Inspector Slack Stephen Critchlow, Edna Alex Tregear, Mrs. Eccles Sally Orrock, and Edwin Moss by Michael Shelford. The director was Gemma Jenkins. Mm -hmm.